time of the three weeks is the time of introspection. It's a time for us to think about how can we improve our ways in order to merit the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash. The Talmud Yerushalmi says, Kol dor shlo nivne Beis HaMikdash biyamav kilu hecharibo. Every generation where the Beis HaMikdash is not rebuilt, it's as if it was destroyed. It means, on some level, we should look about, we should look to the causes of what brought about the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash in order to work on what we can do to undo uh, those actions and to improve upon ourselves to bring about the rebuilding of the Beis Hamikdash. So the Gemara in Gittin tells us that the Second Temple was destroyed because of sinas chinam, because of baseless hatred, uh, because of a lack of sensitivity toned, shown by fellow Jews towards each other. And the Gemara says that there was a man who was very, very angry because he was humiliated when he was invited by mistake to a party and uh, when the host realized that he was invited by mistake and the host really didn't like him, his name was Barkanta, the host uh, threw him out and while he was being thrown out and degraded and debased and uh, humiliated, the rabbis who were there just sat there and didn't do anything. And the Gemara then says that man then came up with a plan to take revenge and he approached the emperor of uh, the Roman, uh, the mayor, governor, to uh, send a korban and a sacrifice to be brought in the base of Mikdash. And uh, this man, Bar Kamsa, put a blemish into the korban, and uh, as a result of the blemish, the korban couldn't be offered. And when Rabbi Zechariah ben Akulas was approached, perhaps to give some sort of leniency for the uh, korban to be offered anyway, so as not, as not to incur the wrath of uh, the Roman government, Rabbi Zechariah ben Akulas said, no, we have to uphold the integrity of uh, the Torah, and uh, therefore we can't do that, and we also can't uh, kill Barakamsa uh, for doing such a thing, because people would then distort what the halakha was uh, with respect to uh, putting blemishes in uh, Kobana. So the Gemara then said, quotes Rabbi Yochanan, as saying, on Misanusa Shah Rabbi Zechaya ben Avkulas, the humility of Rabbi Zechaya ben Avkulas, Hechavivos Beisenu, Vesafos Hechaleinu, Vehiglisanu Me Artsenu, was responsible for the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash and for how we're going into exile. So we really have to focus upon this statement. What was it that he did, Rabbi Zechaya ben Avkulas, that we can learn from in order to undo the damage? Uh, so Rabbi J. David Bleich, uh, Shlita, explains that uh, this isn't necessarily a criticism for what Rabbi Zechariah ben Akulas did. In fact, it's praiseworthy that he upheld the integrity of the Torah so that the Torah shouldn't be distorted. So then how would this lead to the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash? So I'd like to suggest that maybe the explanation is based on another Gemara, the Gemara in Yuma, that talks about how everybody's obligated to learn Torah even if they're very poor, even if they're very rich. And the Gemara says, well, how do we know that everyone's obligated even if they're very poor? From Hillel, because Hillel Mechayev Aniyam. Hillel was very poor, but despite that, he was able to find time to learn Torah anyway, so he obligates all the other poor people. Rabbi Elosa ben Kharsim was very rich and had lots of business investments that he needed to, needed to look after. Nonetheless, he was able to find time to learn Torah, so he's Mechayev the Ashirim. He obligates everybody who's very, very rich. So the fact that Rabbi Zechayev ben Akulos was able to stand up for the principle of the Torah, that's Mechayev us, that obligated the, the rabbis, including himself, to stand up for other principles of the Torah, not only the Ben Adam, the Makom, the service towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but also the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to be kind towards each other, the Ben Adam, the Chavero. And that was not displayed during the Suda, during the feast in which this Bar Kamsa was humiliated and degraded, and the rabbi sat and didn't do anything. In fact, the Medrash Eicha says one of the rabbis who sat and didn't do anything was Rabbi Zechariah ben Avkulas himself. So the fact that the Rabbi Zechariah ben Avkulas was able to uphold the integrity of the Torah shows that it's possible, but we need to do that in the Ben Adam L'Chaveru realm as well. And that's something that we should take to heart during the period of the three weeks, that we have to, of course, strengthen our commitment towards the Ben Adam L'Makom to keep all of the mitzvahs of the Torah, to keep all of our obligations towards the Kaddish Baruch Hu in impeccable fashion. At the same time, we also have to heighten our observance of the Ben Adam L'Chaveru, of taking care of each other. Like Rabbi Yochanan says elsewhere, that what does it mean an misanuso? That b'chol makom shel tamose gidlaso shel kodesh baruch hu shama tamose an misanuso. Wherever you find the greatness and the power of a kodesh baruch hu, that's where you find his an misanuso. What is that? That's the fact that he takes care of the ger and the yasam and the almana. Kodesh baruch hu takes care of the stranger and the orphan and the widow of all the poor and vulnerable people in society. That shows our tremendous integrity and our strength that we're able to stand up 
and always look after the underdog, always look after the vulnerable, always take care of each other regardless of the difficulty of the circumstances and the embarrassment of sometimes standing up for somebody when nobody else is doing that, that's something that we have to do. And this course of our doing that, that, that should enable us to be zolcha, to merit, to, to bring about the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash in our days, as speedily in our time, uh, and to uh, bring about the redemption for the entirety of the Jewish people in the world. Thank you.